Do you feel you're being pulled in different directions? You can't find a place between the rhetoric and all those competing voices. You don't know where to turn. Don't know what to trust. Or you just want to hear a lively discussion about relevant issues without picking sides or all the mudslinging. Well, welcome to the Rock Pile. Join us. That's Lewis and Oma. We talk about faith, culture, and a bunch of other messy subjects. You can agree or disagree. It'll be lively, likely messy, but we hope interesting. Come on. Come on our journey to understand. No rock throwing, just a rock pile. Welcome. Here we are. This is episode two of the Rock Pile season two. Season two. Yes, it is. Now we're going to do a, a very brief. Very brief. Very, we're going to hit the road running here. Yes. So last week, who we talked about? We talked about words. Yes. Feelings. It sounds like a psychology thing. Yeah. But no, we're we, talking about how we are being manipulated. Manipulated. Yeah. Propaganda. Yeah. And it's as simple as that. You yes. know, people doing things, things we see, hear, uh, read. And are, how, we, how we process that and how we look at what's really going on so that we can see the full picture. Right. We have to get the 40,000 yeah. foot view. Yeah, we really uh, do. And when people are pr- uh, bombarding you with information. Trying to elicit fear or. Or, or some sort of a behavior yeah. that they want from you. Sympathy, yeah. So, you know, people, it, it, it's out there. It's, yeah. It, oh, yes, it is. It's so much more evident now because of technology than it ever was before. You know, you used to be, uh, back in the day, you'd watch commercials and those types of things, and they're trying to get you to do something. Oh, sure. Absolutely. But nowadays, everything that we put on the internet is always on the internet. I yeah, mean, technology. There's no, no real delete button ever. Right. And so... You know, companies. Companies and everything else is collecting all this. Right, right. And, and they do it. And this is yeah. why you, you know, you think of these social media giants and the the uh, How they debate, became a giant. How they became a giant. Yeah. And so what is it they sell? Uh, our information. Yeah, well, they, yeah, they use it to yeah. market and to, to allow uh, advertisers to figure out who to, who to target, to, to sell their stuff to or to, you know, uh, show their material to or even suggest things to. Right. So... Tell us how would you would apply that in, you know, a larger scale. Well, if you think about data and collecting and profiling, yes. Okay, just that's what the data is for. That's for exactly a profile. what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so let's just take a a legal perspective. We'll just go for something that it it happens in litigation. All right. Okay. In litigation, especially in complicated cases or cases where there's a high exposure, places where or yeah, uh, claims that. In an accident, for say, where or a catastrophic um, event event occurs, and there's a lot of plaintiffs and a lot so of big money is big stake. Mo- a lot of money at yeah. stake. Okay, pick any cat- catastrophic, uh, oh, you so know, a, uh, a well fire or something like that. Okay. People are injured. Well, when they get through get litigation, start doing discovery, and it get this information, what they'll do is they'll actually hire professionals. There's two types. There's professionals who will. Uh, Look at specific jurors. So they'll profile a juror or the jury pool and get an understanding of what kind of leaning that would be political, economic, socioeconomic. Yeah. They'll pull their you know, profiles and look at them. They'll do a research. Sure. And find we, out. All, we all have heard that one. Yes. yes. And then, but there's also a, what they'll do is mock jury trials. And they'll. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, if you've never seen it done it's essentially what they do is they go to the geographical area where the case is and then what they'll do is they'll randomly select people well they have people that they pay to participate but they profile them and then what they do is they pick what they believe would be a consistent jury pool that would come from that jurisdiction and then they set up a judge and the the party that's paying for it will act as both plaintiff and defendant and it's a lawyer, and present the evidence in a somewhat of an abbreviated fashion. Sometimes it's full on. And so then they the jur- do this whole mock thing yep. to find out what's working and what's not. No, well, they actually, they put that on so they can find out and listen to what the jury is going to do when they deliberate and what verdict they'll come up with and the amount. Oh. And then this way they can judge, make some predictions or assessment as to whether or not um, how they want to treat the case or what they need to, uh, to do to speak to the jurors specifically. And meaning 
how do I get them to be on my side? Yes, you want to elicit Just like we that talked about last emotion, year, last right? Week, and or the other episode. Mm-hmm. So you want to elicit that emotion. So they they get a chance to present the material in front of somebody, right? And then they also get the feedback, and they watch them on the video to see how they what or they can hear them and see them on a camera. Oh, and the juror, the juror when they're deliberating. Oh, there you go. So they watch the whole thing, and so this way they get that a gives sense. Them a ton of information. Yes. And so they, what they do then is they make an assessment of one, do they need to change their tactics? Two, do they need to, what do they need to say? What evidence is most important? Because they will tell them that. Yes. And it's not 100%, but it gives you a better idea oh than just gosh. walking in there blind. Absolutely. I would think so. That trial run would make such a huge difference on so, how you're going to present. Right. And with all this data out there, they can easily figure out and find out mm-hmm. who you are, what you believe. Yes. And they can then make some assessments whether or not you're going to align themselves for or against their client. So I guess we're pretty predictable. We are. We're predictable. Uh, well, we, you know, look at uh, when you buy stuff on uh, the Internet. What do they do? They suggest other things that you could buy. You get emails that say you can buy this oh, or that. Oh, yes, absolutely. We, we talked about a vacation one time and then things about that area that we were talking about going to showed up. Right. So, uh, yes. yeah. and, and every data point you put out there only adds to what they believe about you in general. Now, yeah. granted, these are all generalizations and stereotypes, and there's some good and bad in all of that, good, bad, or indifferent for, for matter, you know, whether or not how it's being used or whether it's really true about you. But it's generally not true about everybody, but it's true enough to where you can make some assessments. And that's right. where the professionals are trying to make this assessment of where you're going to land on a certain issue. So when somebody is actually leaking information like this. Well, if the, yeah, like we've seen this in, in current, just recently. Yeah. Uh, they're leaking information and, and people have been for you know quite a while. It, but what happens is they well, know nothing, if they leak a certain... Nothing's of, happening. That's well, what's yeah, the no, consequences. Nothing happens to them. There's no consequence. And that's, that's the reason why it continues is there's yes. no consequence. And so what happens is that information, they understand that piece of information that's being leaked is going to have a response. They hope it does. Right. So they want to sway public opinion just like you would for a jury pool if you were doing that for that purpose. Right. The news media or whatever gets out there and they, they you know, think about uh, three or four years ago, these riots were going on. Look at all the information that was leaked or said about certain people by specific types of groups about people and yes. look what happened oh, people yeah. were basically convicted before they even got a trial right. it happens all right. the, it happens now that's you see how it happened then it's disturbing it's yeah. happening now yes and so regardless of what you think about the parties re- doesn't matter what side you're on we need to be concerned because if they'll do that to, to certain individuals and groups and yeah. groups well hello so that should concern us as citizens of this country that yes. the the rights that we hold dear doesn't matter if you let's say I don't like the person. Let's say a, it's a, a person who uh, does drugs or whatever. They have these rights, all whether us, we like it or not. Yes, they're all for of everybody. Us have rights. So still, s- yes. A- until such time as the jury, the trier of fact, comes back and gives them yeah. a verdict of whatever that might be. But the thing is, once you leak that information, they understand. Yes. That people are going to act a certain way. So uh, this special master well, that they're a, talking about. Well, that's a um, that's, that's kind of what a go between a mediator type person. Well, it's not a mediator. Now, in in specific cases, uh, very complicated cases, or cases that have a high value, or cases that are have a lot of issues or a lot of parties, it's not unusual for people to ask for a special master. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, yeah. but it does happen. And I've had experiences with, and they're really there as a gatekeeper, so to speak, for lack of a better term, to... They're not like a go-between. No, no, they're not making decisions other than they talk about trying to get the parties together to work out an agreement as to discovery or as to the motions they're going to file or or those types of issues. Because remember, this judge has got a caseload. This is not the only case they're dealing with. Sure. And you could spend your entire time on this one case. Well, the special master is there to help facilitate that. And the judge sets out the order. The parties come together and determine, you know, who the person was. They'll make a recommendation of, let's say, judge says, give me three. You give me three. And the judge then, they, everybody debates on whether they, which one they want. Oh, okay. And at the end of the day, one gets picked. 
And it's, you want somebody who's neutral. And that person is going to come in and they're going to sit down and start looking at what's been going on. And they're going to give an extra set of eyeballs and they're going to help facilitate the court to come to some resolution as to rights to discovery and these ongoing fights that happen all the time. Now, if it's just a, a simple piece of litigation where the judge can handle it, they usually don't ask for it because it just slows things down. Well, then, these people who are highly trained and educated, how can they just all of a sudden have these, what we've seen, these, oops, oh, oh my bad, you know? Uh, they, well, my opinion is they don't. You can make a mistake. We're talking about people who are Ivy League trained, likely, uh, probably top of their class, likely, uh, well connected, uh, and understand. So it's on purpose then. Well, it's it's not an oversight like you and I would do. It's not like say, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mail you the, this letter. No, yeah. it's usually uh, they know better, or they should know better. And if they don't, well, then they need, they shouldn't be doing this job. So it's you. So it's used as. For a specific reason. Yeah, they're leaking stuff on purpose. You know, you can say it's, it's not an accident. You don't hand something to, a, um, to a, a reporter because you just, you know, if you're a whistleblower, that's, that, that's, there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. If you're leaking stuff, there's a reason for that. Behavior has, is a reason. It's not just something, oh, sorry. How did they get it in the first place? Somebody had to give it to them. Well, you yeah. know, so you ask yourself, if this stuff that they're leaking is supposed to be confidential or attorney-client privilege or secret... Right. Well, well, why would you be leaking that to the somebody that doesn't have a clearance to even see it? Yeah. If it's wouldn't. supposed to be something that's, that's confidential or at a certain level, well, there's laws prohibiting you from actually, one, seeing it if you're not clear to see it, and two, and disseminating it when you won't have the permission to do so. Right. So yeah. The, yeah. the whole thing is, what, what we're trying to get at here, or I'm trying to get at is, think about the whole picture. Not about the parties involved, but the what the behavior is and what's that tell you? Deduction. Yes. You have to use deduction. Because you, what you want to do is be able to look at what they're doing and say, hey, this is like, you know, we talked about before we got on uh, and did the podcast. It's like watch a football game. Yes. You know, you got to know the rules of the game and you got to know the players and what they're supposed to do, what they should be doing. And then when the referee calls stuff, you kind of know what's going on and why. Right. If stuff happens and you're in the middle of the field, you're the referee on one side, you can't see what's going on. You have to tr- rely on the other ones in the field. But if you're sitting in the stands, you can see the whole thing. And so what we're trying to encourage here is to say, get up into the stands and start paying attention without trying to be swayed to one side or the other because you got to put this in context with everything else. Yes, you, wanna, you want to look at it and deduce what is really happening and why. Yeah, the you, overall, yeah. you're looking at an overall picture. You know, it reminds me of it reminds me of the um, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. You know, you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, he's talking to Watson. He tells him, so how many stairs were were on that that flight that we just went through? And he, Watson's like, I don't know, quite a few. And Sherlock's, no, there's 17. There's a reason for that. Right. And it's just little things. We have to remember. There's little things that we have to pay attention to. Yes, because we, like we'll he said it. to Watson, I, we, you see, but you don't observe. Yes. That's so just, what we're trying to, yeah. to get you to say, you see stuff, but observe what's going on around it. Not just what's happening in this one instance, like a special master or the leaking of information. Because I can tell you, you know, as a lawyer, if I was out here handing off stuff to the press, uh, I wouldn't be practicing very long. No. And nor should I be, because all of us should be concerned for our own rights, because if the investigative agency is leaking documents to the public, you, you kind There's of throws doubt as to yes. their credibility, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. If your lawyer was giving away documents, you, one would be concerned about the person's credibility. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm just saying, look at what's going on and say, hey, that doesn't really match up with what my understanding of the profession or this, this, this is supposed to happen. Right. That's the point. That you is. don't have to know all the jargon. You don't have to know all the players. But you do know how football's played. And when something doesn't happen, you say, da-da, flag goes in your head. Why? Yes. Why does this happen? And why is it only happen on one side? Why is it only happen in this instant? Mm-hmm. You know, there's the other how, cases. How, when, why. Where yes. and what. Yeah. Well, it's ha- there's other cases that are going on that are just as important 
But yeah, you don't hear any leaks coming on from there. It's only one-sided most of the time. Why most is of the that? Time. Yes. Doesn't matter. I'm not saying you got to believe one side or the other, but you got to at least ask yourself, why? Yes. Why? Use the little gray cell. Yes. This is, yeah. It's that's, Agatha. A her, that's a Hercules. Hercule. Hercule her, Pro. Pro from Agatha that's Christie. Agatha Christie. Christie. Yeah. Sorry. No. That's, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's a matter of paying attention yes. to what's going on. Because when you're dealing with an industry, there's jargon. Oh, absolutely. And part of what's confusing to people, especially in the law well, practice room. legal. Well, legal yeah. jargon, yes. Yeah. And so they don't understand what those things are and they get confused. And then you've got people out here saying all kinds of stuff on one side and all kinds of stuff on the other. And you're stuck in the middle trying to figure out what's going on. Right. That's the point of this is to say, look, don't get wrapped up in a specific filing or a, a judge's wording in a certain matter. Um, take, put that in context with whatever else is going on. Yes. It's like when you do, you hear a good sermon. The, the sermons uh, that come in and they say, oh, I'm going to tell you what the, the, talk to you about where their word originated from, what this Greek word means or Hebrew. We're going to yeah. put that in context of what was going on at the time. And we're going to talk about um, how that applies now in light us, of what right. we Yeah. Right. Ex exegesis. They're going yes. to exegete this passage and give you uh, an application for, how, for you today. So that's the best kind. Yes, what you it get. Is. But if you get somebody who just says, this is what you need to think, that's not necessarily the best. That should make your flags go up. Yeah, because yeah. this is... A little red flag should right. be popping so up. we're not here to... You know, you can go on the internet and find all kinds of people to tell you how to think about certain events. And here, click on my new book I want to sell. <laughs> and yes. that's okay. That's, we understand that's going on. Yes. That's fine. That's, that's just not where we're coming from. Uh, what we want to do is, as we go and sift through some of this stuff going forward, is we're going to talk about... Current events. events. Like we just talked about the right. special master. We didn't go into any detail because, you know, you know what? You really don't need to know all the details unless you want. You're just curious. And that's fine. But you yeah. can find out and you can search special master and ask oh, yourself absolutely. what that is. Right. Uh, but it's going forward. Going forward. So in this case, these things may not necessarily be um, earth shadowing as we're talking about, you know, hyperbole or whatever. But they set the base for when we start talking about things is when the question becomes, is this hyperbole? Are they really exaggerating? Yeah. And if they're exaggerating, this why? fear mongering. Yes. Why yeah. is this happening? And it's more so that right. people will start to really critically think about what's going on around them. You know, yes. what is happening today mm -hmm. and how is that impacted from yesterday or a week ago or the whole entire event? And how does that play out? Because Yes. Just, and even history. Right. We yeah, learn oh. a lot from history. But, and that's the reason why yeah. I think that they're so we trying will to... pull in some history as we move forward. Uh, and, yeah, because uh, sometimes it's just... It just makes sense. Well, it is... Because you look at it and go, oh. It's the context. That's... Yes, it's all about the context. So if we understand about things like, you know, like people talk about constitutional law, the, con the, the constitution or government or with the republic or a, demo or a democracy or fascism. Yeah. You picked all these terms that are going on. Yeah. Progressives, liberals. They got all... That's another political science that's jargon you got to figure out what that means not just what it means today but what, what it, it means historically when it, historically and then how is that different today now. yes because and we they'll found throw, yeah because we've looked things up and went oh wow that's not the not way what was. we thought and, no you know if you go back and you, you know remember your classical literature and classical history you know you know from, you know, from roman history greek history right Medieval history, you put all those things together and you start paying attention and some of these writers and all this stuff, mm -hmm. and you put that in context to what's going on, these terms mean different than yes. what they understood them to be and what they historically have been. Yes. And that's, that's where we're going. That's, that's where we're, we're going. So, this so is stay kind of with this, us. Stay with us. This, so when you hear, read, hear something, read something, see something, and so you have to step back, look at what's going on, ask yourself the why question. And then look at the behavior and say, what's that telling me? That's and right. And why? And pray about it. Pray oh, about it always. Yes. Yeah, yes. And be okay. discerning. And uh, just try not to pick based on your gut. Let That's the little true. gray cells engage and take yes. your time and think about what's going on. All right. Until next time. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining and sticking with us today. Please subscribe to Karen's Rockpile Podcast. 
We're on most podcast sites, Spotify, Podbean, Apple, Google, Samsung. Also, our website and spotlighted organization are in the podcast description. Please share it with your friends, family, or anyone you know. Join us next week. Until then, stand firm, be the light, and most importantly, pray. Blessings.